So now that we've talked about ways to develop mixed integer programs and implement them in Pyomo, you're probably going to have the opportunity to build more complicated models, uh, models that are doing more things that take longer to solve. And eventually you'll probably find that you're going to get to the point where um, the, the models that you formulated are so complex uh, that they're actually time consuming to, to run uh, and can take uh, hours or days to get through. And so you want to find ways to improve your models or, or reduce the amount of burden that the solver has to take on in order to give you a meaningful answer. So in this video, we're going to talk through the methods that you might use. Now, this is just a, a few possible methods. There's, there's a lot more that you could go through, but uh, this will go through some methods that you can use to improve your complex models. So here's a, a list of the uh, items that we're going to go through. Um, again, this is not an exhaustive list. We'll go through these one by one, and I'll give you examples of how uh, each of them uh, might look in practice so that you can uh, have a clear idea of how to uh, actually make use of these. Before we get into the specific, uh, the specific examples for improving your models, let's talk a little bit about some resources you can use. These are just a couple of the possible resources. First, you can look at the, the Groby uh, solver documentation. So Groby has a nice overview on this uh, MIP basics page. It's, it's relatively short, but you can go through and from there you can find links to other resources information. Um, if you want to have a complete list of the parameters, the solver parameters that you might uh, need to involve, you can look at the second link uh, there's parameter descriptions. Uh, obviously, this is going to update with the version of Groby, so you might need to start from the groby.com documentation if the, the version that's available is more recent. Um, at the time of this video, the version is 9.5, and so that's uh, where you would go for that. Uh, that's on the Groby side. There's also on the CBC side um, some documentation available. It's not quite as robust as Groby, but th there is some, some resources there. You can start by looking at the GitHub page for CBC, uh, which is listed here. Specifically, if you scroll down a little ways in the README, there's a link to the command line guide. The command line guide gives you the names of the arguments that you might pass to the solver uh, in order to tailor the, the solution process for what you need. Some common solver settings that are used. Um, th these, again, this is a very small set of the possible solver settings. Uh, but some common ones that you might use for CBC and Groby are listed here. The first thing that you'll probably want to do is set a time limit on the solver. If you have a long solving model, you don't want to wait for optimality. You probably want it to force it to give you an answer after some amount of time. You can accomplish that uh, with either the uh, SEC or seconds uh, setting in CBC or the equivalent setting in Groby is time limit. You can also enforce a maximum number of solutions. So let's say you just want to have one solution that you get from the solver. Once the solver finds a solution, you just want that and that's good enough. It's equivalent to saying, just give me a feasible solution. Um, you can do that with this maximum uh, solutions limit. In CBC, that's specified with the max S parameter. In Groby, that solution limit. So you might do something like, say, you know, give me one solution, give me five solutions, and then pick the best one, et cetera. The MIP gap setting can be controlled in both cases. Um, there are default values that are used. Uh, if you want to customize that, the MIP gap for your specific application, you can use the MIP gap parameter. Uh, Garobi supports concurrent mixed integer program solving. Uh, CBC does not. In Garobi, if you want, Let's say you have a computer with multiple cores. You can tell it that it can solve up to the number of cores that you have uh, concurrent mixed integer programs. And what it'll do is it'll traverse the tree, the, the branch and bound tree, uh, with each of the threads in parallel. And then it'll, uh, it'll consolidate the solutions as it's going. So it's a way of uh, speeding up the solution process if you have a mixed integer program. So now let's move on to examples of how to actually reduce the complexity uh, or solution time of your mixed integer problem. 
The first one we'll talk about is maybe the most obvious one, which is integer problems are computationally expensive because every time you evaluate a node, you have to solve a linear problem uh, for all of the uh, relaxed or continuous variables in the, in the formulation. So if we uh, want to reduce the complexity, we can reduce the number of, of nodes that have to be evaluated, meaning we just need to reduce the number of integer variables that are involved. Uh, we can either do that by just plain reducing variables, but often that's not practical. Alter alternatively, we can reduce the uh, number of integer variables by making some of the integer variables continuous where possible. So here we have an example of how this might actually look. This is a very simple example. In this example, we have states that are uh, indexed with the uh, index i. So state 1 is represented here. So we have the state 1 taking the value 1, which is uh, red. State 2 is taking the value 0. 3 is 1, 4 is 1, 5 is 1, and so on. In this example, what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize this variable x, where x is the coverage of all non-zero states. So this x variable has to span all possible states that uh, don't have the value 0. Uh, so if we could remove 3 and 4 or set their states to 0, we still have to cover this span. Or if we added additional non-zero states in 6, 7, 8, this span would have to, to grow to cover that. So we'd introduce in this formulation some constraint that says um, right, x has to be greater than or equal to the, the range of the uh, non-zero states, and we can be constraining uh, x to do that. The, the part where we can re, uh, reduce complexity here is that just intuitively we would think that the value of x would take the, the, uh, the domain of an integer. Right? It would make sense for x to be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. x would never be the value, you know, 5.5 or something like that. It would never take a fractional value. Um, however, making x an integer uh, domain in this example increases the com complexity of the problem because we now have to test states. We have to do a branch and bound. We have to re relax based on the value of x if it's in the intervening space between two integer values. So it actually would be simpler for us to represent x as a continuous variable. Now, because the uh, extreme points are going to always fall on integer values here, we can be confident that x is always going to take an integer value. Right? It, will, it will take an integer value even though the variable itself is a continuous variable. So in this example, this is just uh, one way of reducing complexity we take what would otherwise be a binary variable, but because of the constraints involved in the problem, we can uh, make it continuous and solve it more quickly.